Welcome to Witch School, the basics of love spells. I'm your host, Birch Tree, here at the Sacred Grove for Witch School. Now, first off, before we get into all this stuff, what all this stuff is for, love spells. Love spells can be the most dangerous of spells. Um, they work really well, and sometimes they can work really well and get you a person that's not good for you, a person that's bad for you. It's generally more acceptable to do a spell for love to the universe, uh, asking the universe to deliver the qualities that you want in a person to you. Uh, and it offers a lot more parameters for the thing to manifest than aiming at a particular person. Aiming at a particular person and forcing them against their will uh, is generally uh, not considered acceptable. And it carries its own rewards. Uh, it's dangerous. You'd be better off just asking the universe for love rather than the love of a particular person. Having said that, you're going to do what you're going to do, and I know that, but we are required to give a speech first. <laughs> Now, first off, from the department of, well, in the water section, since it's fluid, oils. Oils, like, like other spells that we looked at, oils are extremely handy because you can charge them up. When you're feeling extremely full of love, hold it in your left hand. Put it out under the moon, let it get a charge. Put some of your bodily fluids in the oil. Now normally we'd say blood, but since this is uh, for a particular other purpose, you get creative and figure out what bodily fluids to use on that. Oils can be used on yourself, on candles, on any stones or other objects you're using. It can be in, in addition to any other thing you're doing in the love spell. You can do just a couple of these little things together and you've got your spell, but you add another thing to it and add another thing to it. And you got a miraculous spell. You got an incredible spell. So, love oil. Pretty common, love oil. Uh, lots of different versions of love oil. Sometimes come to me oil is used in the love spell too. Uh, but lots of love. Uh, we've got love, love potion number nine, love potion number three. We've got a love oil for same sex partners. Everybody's got their own batch, you know. In the Department of Earth, we got a couple things over here. I've got a rose quartz, big rose quartz egg. I picked this one because uh, it's big and you'd be able to see it on the camera. But of course, a rose quartz heart works perfectly for this purpose. Uh, rose quartz, uh, maybe because of their, their pink look, very often used in love spells, love magic, even for self-love. Uh, and it is a type of uh, quartz, so it tends to cleanse out negative energy that passes through it, give out uh, pure energy like we discussed in some of the other things. Okay, well in addition to rocks, we've got a couple other rocks here, but uh, Here's a, uh, here's a mojo bag for love. Mojo bag's pretty common. Lots of different spells. You can use a mojo bag, candles, rocks, add them all together and you've got a powerful combination. Here, uh, pretty commonly pink, red string, you know, it could be red string, pink string, even blue uh, does come up in love a lot since love is uh, ruled by water. Uh, and then you can barely see down here, that's a lodestone. More on lodestone later, but lodestone is a natural magnet. Uh, not included in a lot of love spells, but it probably should be. Any spell where you're drawing something to you, uh, lodestone's great. Money spell, love spell, job spell, lodestone's very handy. We're going to use one of those in a minute. For your incense, we got some raw love incense, the stuff we make. And then we got some stick love incense, something somebody else makes. I don't know how to make sticks, but uh, uh, I like powdered incense. I like powdered incense because you can do a lot more with it. You can make good recipes. Uh, really hard to do sticks uh, manufacturing on your own. And a lot of people just dip, uh, 
dip punks in oil, and that's not good enough. And over here, candles. As you can see, we got various candles, but we pretty much gone with the reddish and the pinkish. Red tends to be more for passion, lust, that kind of thing, but definitely can uh, stimulate love, ties into that. Pink is generally considered to be uh, the most common uh, color and candle associated with love. Though, like I just said, blue would work too. But uh, not many people use a blue candle for a love spell. Don't know why, but we'll just we'll we'll stick with convention for right now. Got different sizes. It depends on your preference. I tend to like to do things with the big candle. It gives me a lot of carving surface uh, to to uh, sigilize things, write my intent on them. They last a long time. You do spells over several days, and they also drop right down in the little glass uh, holders. That can be handy too. But your tapers, people, you might want to go with a taper. Maybe those are the kind of holders you got. A votive. Votive's good. We're going to use the votive for our demonstration. All of these things combined together can be a powerful love spell. First off, um, in the love spell, as in all spells, really, probably our most important step and your first step, the statement of intent. What do you want to happen? Now, the old folk used to say something else, too. Not only is your statement of intent important, but you need to bind down the action not wanted. So you need to figure, what is the opposite of the thing that you want? And you need to have that, at least in your thought process, bound down. Uh, everything that exists has two sides to it. And you're probably only calling on one side of it for this, because the opposite of love is hate. But hate exists in the equation bind down the action not wanted. So we want love. We want love, we want to banish hate, right? So let's see, statement of intent can also then be broken down into a sigil. I'm not gonna go into that much, but sigil is really a, a very effective method for doing this kind of thing. Go down uh, further in our videos and you can see the, uh, the rant on sigil magic. I think it's a two-parter and uh, we instruct you how to do sigils. So anything that you're gonna write, would be better sigilized for, for the purpose. Um, statement of intent, what do we want to happen? Who's our target? Do we have a target? Is our target the general universe or is our target a person? Some people might want a figure candle for a person because it's easier to visualize and get, makes it more personal, but some people might just want straight out candle too. And you know, the, the prices vary on that kind of thing too. So if you, you're on a, a budget, maybe you wanna go with a, uh, a votive or a, a taper or something like that. But best not to budget your magic. Best not to skimp. Uh, pay what it's worth. Because um, this, in this day and age, is the sacrifice necessary in magic. It is the effort you're going to be giving towards the spell uh, is in that. So now, ready to do the spell, I've selected a candle. And I know, as you know now, Friday, Friday's the day of Venus. Friday's best time to do the spell. Uh, probably at night time would be good. A Friday with a full moon would be even greater. Friday with a waxing moon, still great. But here I've got my candle. I've got my statement of intent. And I've decided on a sigil. I've broken my statement of intent down into a sigil. I'm gonna make it really easy on you here, the sigil. I don't know if you, it's really hard to tell what you can see. 